quick video on setting up um, outputs um, with the IO Link SIG 350. So first what I'm looking at is I'm just using a, just a lamp as an output. Right now I've got it set up as a IO Link inputs. Um, so what we're going to do is take it and configure all the ports and make them outputs. So first we're going to SIG 350 and find the Ethernet IP version, which is what I'm using, and pull up the manual. Manual we found on the downloads section in the literature. I've already got everything mapped over with Ethernet IP. We'll go over a few settings with that. So looking at the PLC side of things, we do need to understand which instance we use. And depending on if the PLC is going to be controlling the master or if we're just, um, as far as the configurations, if we want to do it with um, SOPUS or the web browser or if we want the PLC to configure the device. And what we'll do is we'll scroll down through the manual and try to find all our instance sizes to understand how we want the ports um, or the master to be controlled. So the without configuration um, is used for if you set it up over the web browser or something like that, then once you make the changes, then it'll be fine. I'll be going to DT13. 13,500 um, and then we can see the input assembly and what we're looking at is the output assembly. So again, under the connection I.O. type, I've got it set um, as without configuration. Um, if I had it with configuration when I connect a PLC to it, um, then it would erase all of my settings. So even though I go through and I set all the digital outputs, as soon as I cycle power and the PLC is connected to it, it would erase all of the settings and it would go back to default. <clears throat> so I'll go through and just set all the digital outputs. Um, because we will be mapping out um, pin 4 and pin 2. Also, make sure you're logged in. The password's main. You can find that on one of my previous videos on how to um, set up and map all the I.O. And what I'll do is just cycle power um, on the SIG 350 and close out just to verify that um, all of my settings took place. The last thing you want to do is make a lot of changes and think you've got everything connected correctly and it doesn't work. So I always verify by cycling power. Now I can go back into the ports. Once it boots up, then I should be able to see that I have the same configuration as I did before I closed it or before I powered it off. So now that's verified. So ensuring that that works, now we can move forward. Now we'll look at the manual and look at the mapping and as far as how everything, where our bits and bytes and our signals and stuff are coming from. I am shoved it in D registers. I'm going to D13500. So now um, I've got the register pulled up. I'll go ahead and go online. I'll go into monitor mode so I can actually see live data coming through the PLC. And I go to D13500, and that's where my outputs are going. So now that we can um, manipulate it a little bit better, uh, I'll want to go ahead and take it down to a bit level.
because there's only certain bits that I want to turn on inside of certain bytes. So looking at the manual, I can understand that where the data needs to go um, and how I need to map it, what must turn on um, to turn on which output. So first, what I'll need to do is I'm going to be looking at everything for pin 2. So I'll turn on the enable. If that goes off, then all of pin 2 will go off. That is the master for pin 2. So now I'll turn on part 1, pin 2, and you can see it come on. And I'll do the same thing to all the other ports. And you can see it's every other bit for a byte. I mean for a word. So two bytes of data and every other bit turns on um, a pin 2 on a different port. You see that is two bytes, byte 2 and byte 3. Now we'll look at turning on pin 4. Well, first let's test this one just to show that it does go on and off. So I'll set that to 0 and the light goes off. And I'll set it back to 1 and it comes back on. So that's working correctly. Now we'll go ahead and do the same thing for um, pin 4 and we'll turn it on and off. And again, you have an enable and an on. If the enable's off and the on's on, it will not work. Both of them have to be set to a high bit. And you can see them coming on as I turn them on. And that's how you configure and SIG 350 with Ethernet IP for pin 2 and pin 4 for outputs. And that's it. Let me know if you need anything else.